Dr. Anasinga, great to have you on our program, The Business Detective. Uh, to begin, you are one of the best cardiologists in the country. What got you into cardiology? Yeah, first of all, I must thank uh, Dinesh uh, for inviting me for this uh, uh, program. You can take them away from the suffering. And so this is the main reason I want to do cardiology. And also, you see that in cardiology, it's more, I would say, uh, the academically and the professionally um, very uh, gratifying. And it's very scientific. And so there are so many uh, acute conditions and you treat them then and there and at, at a physiological level you know you see the pressure you see the pulse at physiological level you see the satisfaction you see the results if somebody with high blood pressure you see physiologically high blood pressure you uh, treat them and you see the pressure is going down not like any other profession you know what i mean and yes. uh, so for a for an example economies now you're struggling to get the economy back into shape so you have to adopt certain policies now, but you would see the results maybe years later, maybe months later. But here you see then and there, somebody comes with a heart attack, pressure is low, pulse is low, and but and you do the procedure, primary angioplasty, and then you see then and there in front of your eyes, satisfaction patients uh, come back to normal life. Okay. Uh, doctor, talk about the disease and how it is affecting the average Sri Lankan. Uh, to tell you frankly, uh, the, the car heart diseases, especially heart attacks and high blood pressure, I would say uh, day by day incidence is going up and the more and more cases we see um, all over. And now we saw uh, this condition, heart disease, heart attack initially with um, higher socioeconomic groups. Now you see even in the poor people, among poor people, middle class, and all over in urban areas as well as village areas. So it's spreading all over. And uh, so I would say the incidence is going up and it's, uh, it's, it's a more or less, it's a wider um, uh, kind of a social group now you can see. And uh, whether it doesn't matter whether you're doing certain job or whether you are in certain socioeconomic group, it doesn't matter, I say it's affected to everyone and then it's, 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 you can see it all over the spectrum and uh, so more and more young people though, more and more young people we see and uh, sometimes you might see no uh, the so-called conventional risk factors you know there are conventional risk factors, for, risk factors for heart diseases like smoking diabetes pressure stress but sometimes we tend to see more and more people you can't see any of these risk factors. They just come with the heart attacks. Maybe some stress we don't see, chronic stress sometimes you can't see, and maybe some genetic variations, and uh, maybe some food habits, they are, they are the, uh, the kind of having, and so they are contributing. And uh, so th this is the, the, the situation at the moment in Sri Lanka, and then especially during this period, I have uh, even recently told someone, and so you see there is a sudden jump of uh, incidence of uh, uh, the heart disease, heart attacks as well as... Uh, doctor, uh, doctor, you wrote an article recently in the Financial Times highlighting some of the challenges faced by the, hospi uh, the hospital sector. Uh, is there a real shortage of drugs in the hospitals or...? Uh, yeah, yes, yes, Dinesh. There, is a, there are shortages of uh, medicine essential medicine and maybe about 5 to 10 percent of essential medicine so what we used to have in the country now uh, run out and uh, so but still actually we have uh, discussed with the authorities we have dis discussed with the manufacturers we i mean uh, even with the health minister now current health minister uh, uh, professor jayasuman we have discussed and so we are slowly getting it back and so that's i always believe that if you don't have anything you have to actually have you have to reach the people, responsible people, you get it back. So I have got certain um, the, 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 the medicines like that. And uh, so, but but end of the day, I don't know how, how we are going to have this, like su how sustainable it is. And so we have temporarily got the medicine back, but still there are few medicines uh, uh, in shortage. But the thing is like, I'm, I'm very concerned about when it comes to heart and cardiology and heart diseases, there are the blood thinners, blood thinners like there's a blood thinner called propidogrel, and we, we didn't have it. 
and now we have it but but the thing is still i spoke to the authorities and we got it back and so that's a very essential medicine because it's a blood thinner for heart attack patients as well as heart pa- other heart patients and also there's a wonder molecule called tenecteplase it's a blood it's a clot buster that is a must actually i'm the one who got that molecule to sri lanka and it's very expensive molecule though but we have got it at a cheaper rate now and so that is given for all the heart attack patients that's a life saver dinesh and so that is slowly we are running out and uh, so i'm very worried about it because end of the day somebody in the periphery if they go to heart attack they don't have the facility for stent this drug will save their life and if this drug i mean if we if can't afford this drug and then what will happen to our people people means uh, the all the heart attack patients will uh, the would start dying and so i'm very worried about it and but at the moment we have got it limited uh, uh, stocks and but anyway so we are looking forward to have it i mean maintain the supply continues executives in the private sector when it comes to managing hypertension uh, diabetes etc in uh, among uh, executives yes private yeah. sector executives yeah the thing is like all these um, uh, kind of people uh, the uh, i would say uh, the executive group i mean they work hard they have all the, they are chasing targets and so they never understand they have to look after uh, their health so that's a biggest in- investment one could uh, actually uh, uh, do uh, for your own health and so they are neglecting their health because they are they have a target maybe the profits maybe uh, the various other things business uh, uh, the uh, targets uh, but but they always tend to forget it and so therefore you see more and more high cholesterol Uh, among them uh, more and more high blood pressure and more and more heart attacks so therefore what i is, tell them is do regular checkups and check to look to look after your health and while you are chasing whatever targets whatever ambitions but look after your health that's the most important thing and the regular exercises and don't say that you don't have time and so eat good food and so may, maybe the healthy clean food and just because you are running out for meeting just grab something and you know eat and forgetting your health does not mean anything so eat may give you some time and uh, for for what you are eating and uh, so basically what you eat what you are and uh, so therefore the most important message i have to convey that is look after your health okay uh, doctor how important is wellness in general yeah so wellness i would say that's the that's the most important thing for the anyone in this world and then because i mean if you don't if you are if you are unhealthy and uh, so you don't enjoy it, there's no happiness there so when to to have uh, happiness in life that's what everyone is trying and uh, so you have to have uh, the, the you have to be very healthy and a lot of people what they do is they chase uh, the the something all the time maybe the wealth maybe the professional achievements but but all every time they chase it but but the thing is like they never think about their health once you are once you achieve it maybe after 10 15 years and so you are you are become very unhealthy so basically what i am trying to do the say is when you are chasing something without disregarding your health you are not living in the present you are not living in the future as well uh, doctor i know you have a lot of interest in the health sector as a professional what is your vision for the health sector so oh, and i think health sector uh, at the moment we are very we should be very proud that we have a very good health uh, sector but there are certain adjustment we have to make and we have to strengthen uh, the the our primary health care i would say the primary health care is like we have to have like at the peripheral level we have to have primary health care nurse we have to have primary uh, uh, occupational therapists we have to have, uh, we have to have uh, physiotherapists for people to go and have their services at the periphery that we have to improve and uh, so also i think uh, we, the health care should be more available for everyone doctor should be available and so at the moment we have that we have to make it more available and the health care facilities as well as the the, the professional health care professionals should be uh, we have to increase in numbers and should be uh, made available and also more and more research and more and more we have to have more and more research as well as statistics we have to we have to show the world what we do and we have to have we maintain research as well as uh, statistics we don't do it at the moment if somebody comes and asks 
uh, Sri Lanka, what is the number of heart attacks we are getting a day? We, we don't have an uh, accurate figure at the moment. So we are not very accurate in uh, the, the, kind of, uh, 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 the kind of getting our data. So that is the, another one. And also, the, we have to have very good Medicare system, like in the United States of America, and they have Medicare system. So it's a kind of a health insurance system for, um, uh, for poor people, certain group of the society, uh, to have free medical uh, private care. And then it will reduce the burden for the government sector as well. So that is, I'm uh, suggesting, as we have to have. Okay. Doctor, what is your view about private medical education? Oh, that's, I think my personal opinion is private medical education is a must. I mean, that will, that will, more than anything else, now we are facing a grave economic crisis. I mean, the loads of people going, uh, I mean, uh, to other countries uh, to, uh, to get, uh, obtain M MBBS. And so here, I mean, if it's how much money you must be knowing, and so much. And so we, all that money we can retain in our country. And if we have private medical education in this country, more than that is another revenue for Sri Lanka because other people from other part of the world, they will come. Of course, we have to have proper blueprint, uh, pro properly we have to establish it. And so the, the, there should not be a loophole in the system if you are if you are if you are going to have a private um, a university or private medical college, we have to establish according to the prevailing uh, the guidelines. So I think I totally come out. I really like it because more than anything else, I think uh, our people we can have more and more doctors here, and they will be with their parents and the, the families. They, they, the, then they won't go to other countries and living all alone. And so more and the revenues we are getting. And so we can improve our healthcare system. There will be more and more people, doctors for us, because more some people we, who go for all these students go for overseas uh, the education, medicine, and to get the uh, MBBS, they won't even come back. So we, we lose uh, skill level. Okay. Uh, doctor, how is technology impacting your profession? Uh, it's, it's a very uh, good question again. So it's a limiting factor, Dinesh. And so technology is like uh, it. it that, there, there are certain limitations when we work. And at the moment, I think we haven't got the 100% technology. And uh, so it's, it's a kind of, we are heading for that, but I think we have to have proper machinery and uh, proper new uh, knowledge, uh, facilities for research. And also, now even if we are doing a procedure, so we, we basically, we, our hands are tight sometimes. We, 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 we basically don't have enough technology. So I think at the moment, uh, health sector need um, modern technology as well as uh, expertise. Okay, uh, doctor, as a you are a very busy medical professional, how do you relax as a human being? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so I I always uh, looked out to myself. That's the most important thing. If you want to serve others, you have to be like you have to be healthy, and I know it very well. And so I take my time. I of course uh, do my. Uh, 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 through team uh, daily exercises, I I go to gym and I do swimming, I do walking, I do uh, running, and so every day, every day I do some physical activity, and so I do meditations, and uh, I go to uh, nature, I do wildlife, take pictures, I connect my soul with the uh, the the nature, so that will kind of uh, refresh your soul and the spirits. And uh, so all that I do, I do photography. So I take time off, uh, maybe after maybe a couple of weeks work and then I take time off. And I'm a very happy person because of uh, all these extra uh, curricular activities. Okay. Uh, my final two questions are, doctor, what is your advice to a young medical doctor? So uh, my advice to young medical doctor is like... Um, I think most important thing is as a doctor, you should be very proud and happy that this is a, the noblest uh, profession in the world and you serve the humanity and no one else can do that. And you cure, um, uh, rescue uh, basically uh, ill patients. And uh, so that's a very good uh, job service you are doing for the humanity. And so most important thing is, I think you have to be, uh, you have to do what patient needs. So you have to think about the patient, what patient wants, not what you want or the organization wants, what patient wants. 
and so think about that and do the job and also you have to have a little knowledge more than the knowledge what you need is uh, compassion sense of humor and uh, common sense compassion sense of humor and common sense i think doctors have it but i'm trying to highlight it and so all the young generation i'm i'm stressing that we we should have as doctors all those good qualities okay also doctor one of the biggest complaints is that doctors don't update themselves regularly on the latest developments what is your take on that uh maybe too because like i don't know why it is happening because as as a doctor i always believe that you have to uh, you have to know about the society you have to know about your own subject read daily you have to read grab a journal and re- related to your field grab a paper daily paper that's what i always tell take the daily news take the island paper and i always say this dinesh if you read the island editorial every day you can be a, you can be a, the best politician in this country you don't need anything you can govern a country i'm not be i'm not going to be very personal but what i'm trying to say is if you read the paper you would know about the society you know about the people's needs and so according to that you can adjust your practice and also you have to read little bit of reading at least maybe about 25 minutes uh, 25 to 30 minutes reading that is enough so read 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 okay uh, doctor my final question to you given up challenges currently what is your expectations of your, uh, our leaders uh the political leaders yes yeah i think i don't want to touch on dinesh politics because it's for me the politics in this country is like little is beyond my uh, the liking and uh, but but one uh, for a good leader i think i think i always believe that you have to think again about the people you have to feel the the pulse of the people and you can be a very good politician actually if you can feel that if you are with the people if you can feel the pulse of people that they are the great leaders only thing is when people come to power political power uh, they they lose that and they lose that they forget how the people would feel and so that's where the lot of people lot of politician fail so this is my message and so for a, for a, for a, for a, for a leader so you feel the pulse of the people how the people feel you have to have a good understanding okay thank you doctor great talking to you and uh, good luck with your work thank you very much for having me